family goes oh na 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 oh na 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 purchase your come kick it What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. And I am Gia Casey. And this is another edition of the Casey Crew. Welcome. Hello, 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 beautiful people. That's right. Welcome back. It's episode two of our two-year hiatus. Yes. I kept saying one year. It's our two-year hiatus. Uh, And I want to say thank you for joining us again. If you don't know what the podcast is about, we'll break it down simply. It's all about relationship, raising kids, and hot topics. Mm -hmm. Simply that. Uh, Sometimes when you go on social media, you always see somebody's highlight reel, right? You see a couple's highlight reel. They never discuss everything that's actually going on in a relationship. And we want it to be that. We talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, indifferent, some of the high points, some of the low, the lows. But that way, people out there can say, you know what? It's just not me. Their relationship is fucked up just like us. So that's pretty much. I mean, I wouldn't say that our relationship is bleeped up. No, we, we have ups and downs like anybody else. I would not say that our relationship even approaches bleeped up. You know, you know what I mean. No, I don't. What, say what you mean and mean no, what you I'm say. No, I'm just saying that, you know, no relationship is perfect. And e- I agree with that, but then that's, what, then that's what you should have said. Well, that's what I said after. The relationship is just as bleeped up as ours. Like, what are you talking about? Well, what I want to talk about is uh, her name is, let me get to it, 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 let me get to it. Uh, JBJB. They only gonna do two episodes, then stop again. Envy don't care about his podcast. JBJB, whatever your name is, JBJB2400. You are wrong. This is episode two. We, Hold your horses. We're gonna prove you right next episode. <laughs> don't get too full of yourself. Two podcasts does not constitute consistency. So we have to be, you know, like six, seven episodes, and then me and JB, 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 we'll take you seriously. So we're going to get there. Also, before we go, and I read all your comments, and Gia does as well. You can leave comments under thecaseycrew at gmail.com if you need advice or anything, or you can follow us at the Casey Crew Podcast. Now, one Queen V, she put, please tell Gia to talk about not farting or shitting around your man. She said <laughs> it a couple of years back, and every time I tell girls they're gross for doing it, they get all defensive. I need Gia Casey to explain why we shouldn't again so I can stop getting looked at like I'm crazy. So I I, uh, I just want to show you uh, one Queen V's uh, rear end. Yeah. If she shits so she farts, woo! She, she, she shouldn't be farting around nobody. Okay, but anyway. <laughs> what did you, you say You said about- it's one Queen V? One Queen V. The number one or O-N-E? The number one. Any underscores or anything? Nope, nope, nope. There's one Queen, Queen v. v as in Victor. That's right. Okay, girl. I'm just saying you got a little something going on back there. But do you do you agree with that? I don't remember what you said. What do you mean you don't remember what I said about, about farting or shit in front of her man? Um, I would say I don't. Put, I, I'm not going to go to the bathroom around you. It's just wow. We've been together for damn near thirty years. Have I ever gone to the bathroom around you? No, but I walk in the bathroom every time to make you feel uncomfortable. I mean, I, I mean, you try. Yeah, you try. Um. But I never voluntarily mm-hmm. go to the bathroom around All you. Right, we've been together 30 years. Um, we share everything together. We swap spit. My mother, and this might be what she's referring to because she seems to already know my stance. So mm-hmm. I might have referred to it um, some years back on a podcast. But my mom always said that familiarity breeds contempt. Mm-hmm. In other words, when you're too familiar with a person, you don't keep anything to yourself. There's no mystery. There's no sense of privacy. You just let him see everything. That's what she would say. She'd be like, you know, you never let somebody see everything. Mm -hmm. You know, if you know that you have like a flaw or something that, you know, you're insecure about or you're not proud of or whatever, you know, you be discreet about it. Mm -hmm. Always leave a little sense of mystery and don't just give everything up. Because once you give everything up, there's nothing to question. There's nothing to discover. And I took that. And I also think that, you know, there's something to be said about being ladylike. Mm -hmm. You know, I I like that. I was very much like 100% that way, probably for 
27 years with you. We're together for 30 years. Um, in the last three years, I let a little bit go because I kind of resent you a little bit. What do you mean? I'm not going to lie. I feel like when we're in the bed and you let one go, like I'm offended. I, I'm genuinely offended. Like I can understand if it's silent. You didn't know that it was going to make a sound. Mm -hmm. You didn't know that it was going to funk up the room. Okay, here and there. All right, we're humans, right? Right. But you just very unabashedly just let it rip. And it makes me feel like, damn, like you don't even care about any type of discretion. Like you, like I know comfortable we've been together for years and we know each other and we're one and we're soulmates and we know everything about each other and all that stuff like yes i feel all those things too but i would appreciate a little bit of discretion it'd be nice if you were discreet yeah i don't want to smell that because it's sick like i don't want to smell that i genuinely don't want to smell it i think that you should do what i have done in the past which is get up leave the room go in the bathroom go in the hallway stay there for a little while so you don't leave a trail you know, <laughs> and then rejoin. But just letting it rip, then we both have to sit there and suffer through it and you laugh and think it's funny. I don't appreciate it. I don't like it. So I don't do it. So now, I mean, I, I won't do it, especially if I know that it's going to make a sound. But now sometimes, I mean, I'm like, shoot, well, he don't care. I don't care. So if it's like a little something, something, and then you'll look at me with such disgust, like, <gasps> did you just pass gas? I said, did you fart? Whatever. <laughs> I didn't feel comfortable saying that word. I don't like, I don't like, that's the other F word. I don't like it. <laughs> um, you'll say, did you just pass gas? And I'm like, why? And you'll be like, because it smells like you just passed out. Well, maybe I did. Maybe I did. Now you know how it feels. I don't, I don't understand why you're trying to keep, you know, something away from me because of it's mystery. nasty. Babe, because it's nasty. We kiss. We swap spit. Spit doesn't stink. I eat your bookie. And that doesn't stink either. But if I eat it, I might as well smell it. <laughs> Do you feel that way? Because then I'll take one less shower before no, we're intimate. No, I don't feel that way. <laughs> I don't feel that way. Time. I mean, I don't, I, don't, I, don't seem the big, I don't see the big deal. It's, it's something that people do. You know, people have actually died for trying to hold in their fart. I don't really believe that. That is true. You, that is you true. know, you say you No, say, that is true. You, you say that actually, all the time. Out there, you I, can actually I, Google I, it. There have been people who actually held in their fart and Guys, let's died. Google this collectively. Uh, no, uh, I'd like can, to know. All right, I'm, I'm going to Google it for you right now. No, please don't do it right now okay. because it's going to take too long. Okay, but no, that is a thing. And I feel like if you love me and you're having a little gassy time, you shouldn't... You, sh you, you should, think we should share that? You think we should share the funk? You shouldn't have a problem with it. I would not. I mean... I, I, I don't have a problem with that. I've never cursed you out because of it. I just don't appreciate it. I don't like it. I don't want to be in the bed and then be riddled with an odor for five to seven minutes. So you want me to say that I won't do that? You have, to use the, you have to use the same exact energy. You gotta get up and go light a candle. You gotta get up and go open the window. You gotta get up and go open the door. Why don't you get up, pass gas, and then come back? We don't have to do any of those there's things. No it's the same amount of energy. There's no better feeling of passing gas under the covers and then waiting for you to smell it. That like that is the best thing ever. See, that's the thing. You enjoy it. I do. You enjoy, you enjoy the reaction. I do. You, you enjoy the slight attitude. So that's really what it is. But my point is, I don't think it's polite. Okay, well, there you have one queen bee. That, that's your answer. So you can tell your friends to listen to that part. That's not what this podcast was about. We weren't even supposed to go in that direction. I read your comment and I thought it was funny. But I want to go back to our last podcast. Okay. The last, last podcast, we talked about our kids. We talked about Madison. We talked about Logan. We talked about London, Jackson, Brooklyn. And we didn't really talk about the menace. You're just going to label her now? She's the menace. That's how you're going to label Peyton her? Peyton is a menace. The perfect She's example not. of Peyton she might be a little nudge. If you think of the Joker movie and you see the Joker running down the stairs doing all those tricks, that is Peyton. That's what I think Peyton does every morning when she wakes up. Wait, 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 what? You know, the, I sent you the clip of the, the Joker. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is Peyton. Kicking things, that is Peyton. So Can we insert that? Yeah, I'm sure we can. Now, let me tell you about Peyton. Peyton is the child that I think if we had her third, I think we would only have three kids. <laughs> Absolutely positively. Stop it. She is the boss baby. Look, hold on, hold on, hold on. She is the on. one that runs this household. Just there's a fine line. Between what? You talking about my baby and you getting a black eye. No. There's a fine line. Peyton is that baby. Peyton is the one that controls and runs this house. She this runs Madison. True. She runs mommy. She runs Irma. She runs me. She runs Mercedes. There, put it like this. There's been several times when I look at 
let's say I drop off at Mercedes house and she's the one that you got to knock on the door and run because nobody wants to watch it. <laughs> so she puts everybody to sleep. It'll be two in the morning. She's watching Paw Patrol and everybody else is sleeping. Yeah. She is that type. And I then, come out the shower and I'm like, wow, she really put you to sleep. All the time. Roles were reversed. All the time. And she doesn't play it. She has a little blankie that she never wants to leave. Right? You said that lightly, that she never wants to leave, that you cannot leave that child without her blankie unless it's for school because she understands that she's not allowed to have her blankie in school. But as soon as she gets in that car, if that blankie is not, not in that waiting car? for her. Oh, my goodness. No, she's bawling. And it she only wants that blankie. A, she you can't no swap blankie. it out with another blankie. No. It was the same thing with Brooklyn. You remember no, that? No, this is worse. Do you think this is worse? Yes, this is you worse. You don't remember. You don't remember. You I don't. Do. Re no, you don't remember. With Brooklyn, Brooklyn had that little raggedy pink blanket since she was born. It was one of her baby blankets. I got it from Nordstrom's. It was a knit. And she was so attached to it. You don't remember when we went on the Disney cruise? And we lost it. And we lost that blanket. And Irma actually, damn near, Irma lost that blanket. Irma damn near jumped in the water to look for that blanket. We found <laughs> it has it to be here somewhere. Yeah, we found it. Thank God. <laughs> no, no. Do you remember when we? It, it was hell. It was hell. That baby didn't have it. She cried. She had an attitude. She ruined everything. We searched the entire ship. We retraced all of our tracks. We went to the lost and found like five times a day. We would just be approaching. We'd be like twenty yards away, and they'd be like. Not yet. Not here. <laughs> they knew it. I mean, it was. You remember when we went to take them to see Disney on Ice? Yes. Benz, were you with us? At Prudential Center. At the Prudential in, in Center. North. Do you remember? Yeah, we got damn near halfway Irma home and left, drove back. Irma left. To go get that blanket. blanket. <laughs> we had to turn around and go back to the Prudential Center and fight through all of the people coming out speak to the security guards and try to convince them that the blanket was that important because we had to go against the outgoing traffic to go back to our seats to find the blanket. And we did. But while we were on our way back to the Prudential Center, I don't know if you remember, I went to Nordstrom.com to see if they still made the blanket because at this point, she had to be like, how old is she about that? Right now, she's seven. Mm -hmm. This was before the pandemic? Yeah, before. Okay, so she was... Three? She had to be like three years old. I Googled, I ordered three more of the blankets, okay? They came, I washed them like three, four times so they got a little, you know, weathered, grungy. little, not grungy, but you know, a little, because mm, her blanket was nasty. It didn't matter if you shouted it out, if you used Tide, it didn't matter what concoction you put in that washing machine, that blanket done been through it and it looked like it. So we got the new blanket, so I tried to, you know, get it a little weathered. Mm -hmm. We tried to give it to her, I'll never forget. She was like, this not the real banky. <laughs> I said, yes, it is. Look, smell. This not the real banky. And she took it and she walked over to the garbage and threw it in there. And I said, yo, this dish is real. Like, this is real. So Peyton's the same thing. But the difference between the two of them is that Brooklyn snuggled with her blanket. Peyton puts her blanket in her mouth. All day long. Like, it's like Linus. Like, right. she just has that blanket with her and she shoved the little end in her mouth and it always has to be the same end. Y'all laughing because y'all know. It's, it's, it's disgusting. <laughs> it's, the, the blanket is nasty. We have to wash and dry it every single day. Yeah. It is like, I don't know what's going to happen. It's literally going to deteriorate and but, fall apart. But that's how you know if she likes you or not. If she likes you, she'll give you the other end of the blanket so you can put it in your mouth. Yes. That's how you know if she likes you. If she's, if she, dying. If she's your homie, <laughs> she's your homie she'll, she'll take the other like blanket and she'll she be like, take for my blanket for you. Because, yes, <laughs> she'll do that too. But she, yeah. she is... A beast. And she's a beast with a vocabulary. No blankie. Take it out. <laughs> Get my blankie. Get my blankie. She took my blankie. <laughs> <laughs> okay? I got to make it for me. Just let her get my blankie. Just let her get my blankie. Okay, my baby. I love you. It's okay. We're not going to let him take your blankie anymore. <laughs> Who pooped? Me. You pooped? <laughs> no, I, I don't want to look, and it's not on my hand. Don't worry. I'm okay. Yeah. I love you. Can I have a kiss? <gasps> You're not going to give me a kiss now? All right, I'll just get my kiss from Daddy. She has to be, I think, our child with the best vocabulary as 
as at a young age, I should say. I mean, before she was two, she was talking sentences. Uh, she was telling you what she wants, what she wants to eat, what she doesn't want to eat. What she's going to do, what she's not going to do. She was never into baby food. We never had to buy baby food. She only wanted human food. <laughs> I say human food. Because our apparently food. she's an animal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she only wanted our food. She would eat off your plate. <laughs> she would drink out of your, your cups. She did not want that baby food. She She's just that type of baby. I mean, there's something to be said about, quote unquote, COVID babies. Do you believe in that? Do you think that that's true? What about COVID babies? Like COVID babies are apparently supernatural. I I would say <laughs> that she's, I, I don't know about supernatural, but she's different. She is different. And, and she's, she's unique from all of our other kids. But she keeps up with all of our other kids. Like she controls <laughs> and runs them. Whatever they do, she does. If they flip, she's flipping. She watches her own television. She can tell you what she watches. So, you know, most kids, most children, you put on Paw Patrol, you put on a show and you just let them sit. She tells you what she wants. She'll be like, I don't want Paw Patrol today. I want Bebe Finn. I want Bebe Finn. I or, want Angel Baby. I want... Or no Bebe Finn. I want Boss Baby. No Angel Baby. I want Coco Melon. Oh, Coco Melon. You put Coco Melon on. Not this one. You change it. Not this one. You change it. That one. I want to watch. Then she'll get her blanket, put it in her mouth, and then lean back. That, <laughs> yeah. that's, just, that's just who like, she is. Like, she's thoroughly communicable. And she's very manipulative. Like she's intelligent enough to manipulate and run everything around her. Mm -hmm. It's like she'll be so loving towards you. And then it's like she plays psychological games. Then when she's ready, she'll withhold it. She'll take it back. So it makes you yearn for a little bit of affection or a little I love you or a little kiss. And then you'll ask for it and then she'll say no. Oh, those and then are you want words. then basically you want to tap dance in front of her to get her to give you a kiss. And then when she does it, then it's like your whole day goes better from that point. Now you're fulfilled. It's like I'm like, I feel like she's playing with my emotions on purpose. You know what I mean? Like she knows. And it's like she'll take you because now, listen, we got like we're instilling discipline at this point because it's necessary, you know? So my new thing is like I put her in the corner. Like, oh, you don't want to listen? Because she she understands, you know, people will take for granted that, oh, she's only two years and four months. No, that little more effort understands. She understands. I'm starting to not have private conversations around her because I feel like she's going to go back and tell my business. Like, no, it's fact. like that. Like, I can't, like, nah. I don't know what she's going to do with this information. <laughs> so, no, like, she she really understands. So now she's like, oh, no, if I do something that she doesn't like, no, mommy, you go in the corner. And then she'll walk her and in And she'll the grab corner. your hand, take you in the corner, and then, like, lean all her body to kind of draw you down to the floor. And then you got to sit there while she reprimands you. I'm not your friend. You didn't give me lemonade. I like, so you had too much sugar today. You can't have a, Pepe wants lemonade. No lemonade? You sit in the corner. <laughs> I mean, no, no, no. You don't understand. So her punishment used to be she would have to sleep in her own crib or we would put her in the, uh, what's that thing called? The toddler bed. The toddler bed. Mm -hmm. So that would be her punishment. You go, we're going to put you in a toddler bed. We're going to put you in your bed. Um, I seen this on, on TikTok where uh, a dad had a, a stuffed animal and he act like he was beating up the stuffed animal and the daughter would listen. So I tried that. I was I, so I picked up the bunny rabbit. It's a little bunny rabbit. I don't even know where she got it from. And I was like, "You're not listening, bunny rabbit. You're not listening. You're not listening." And I threw the bunny rabbit in the bed, right? <laughs> and then I said, "Because hey, apparently he thought that was cute." I thought it was going to work. I said, "Peyton, you're not listening." She goes, "Me not listening." And then she ran and jumped in the bed. <laughs> I was like, "What?" I was like, "What part of the game is this?" And she was like, "Yeah, I'm not listening." Yeah, I'm like, "Whoa!" And then she got out and she showed me, and I shut up. But you know, we'll have her in the bed. We'll have her in the bed. <clears throat> And she she made up her own bedtime. Like, oh yeah, threatening pow pows and threatening all these things. None of it works. Didn't work on that baby. So we'll say, okay, Pepe, it's time to go to sleep. At about ten thirty is when she gets her second win. That's when she gets up. She wants to flip around the e bed. E forty, E like, forty must come on because she get hyphy. When I say she starts <laughs> jumping and flipping, don't don't get don't don't. Like at ten thirty. Every, Every night. night. This is before she was two. This is like six months ago. She wants to do flips and tumbles. She wants to make jokes. She wants to play peekaboo. She gets off the bed, runs around there, and then she wants to hide. And then she's hiding somewhere in the room talking about peekaboo. I play hide and seek. And I'm like, we got to get this kid to bed. So then we'll threaten. You about to go in the toddler bed. Oh, oh, oh. 
or you're going to go in the playpen. We're going to make it uncomfortable. You Don't get put in the playpen. So then I say, all right, Rashawn, I'm going to go get paper. I'm going to put her in the playpen as soon as I get up. And she could tell by my body language that I'm serious. She will run, cop on the bed, and then slide into the pillow like she's sliding into third base. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, this little heifer knows, knows. Like, she knows. Because the threat isn't enough. I got to get up and act like I'm going to pick her up and put her where I'm threatening to put her. Then it's like, oh, this bitch serious? (laughs) So she'll just get up and then she'll slide into bed and then she'll look at you and start laughing like, yo, I've been playing you this whole time. Everything's funny to her. Everything's funny to her. And she she won't even allow me to kiss gear. Oh my gosh. Or anybody. Without permission. None of them. Without permission. If I go goodnight and I'm going for a kiss, no, don't kiss mommy. Don't kiss daddy. No, no, no. My mommy. My mommy. My mommy. No kiss my mommy. So then she'll get up and then she'll put her hand in between our lips or she'll take his face and mush it or she'll put her whole body in between us as a wedge. And then if he kisses me anyway, she will get on top of our faces and slide her body in between our faces to push us apart. And then if that doesn't work, she just gets violent. My mommy. What's your, what's my mommy. My mommy. I'm kissing my mommy. My mommy. No. Not mommy. No kiss mommy. Don't kiss mommy? No. I kiss you. No kiss. I kiss my mommy. I kiss you. I kiss you. My mommy. I kiss you. Don't you bite me. <laughs> kiss my mommy. Look, my mommy kiss. Roly poly, roly poly. Roly poly, that's a new thing? Roly poly. Mommy, mommy. Yes, my baby, I love you. Don't worry. Mommy, don't Mommy, do Roly poly, roly poly. Roly poly, what does that mean? Roll off the back? Yeah, it, she gets violent. You're you going to get pow pow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, and yeah. then she'd be like, my mommy, she did it to London. And like, oh, she slapped London in the face, actually. London was like, this little girl just really slapped me in the face. She looked at me like, mommy, I got to take this. And I'm like, she's two. She's two. I have the video, but I don't know if I'm going to share it with y'all. Because yeah. <laughs> she does it every night. Every night. So sometimes I, I record it. I might, I might share it. But, I it might if, share. but if you do sneak a kissing, she wipes the kiss off. Oh, yeah. So if I kiss, if I kiss mommy, she's going to wipe the kiss off. That's, that's it, hands down. But that is the menace. And the reason I want to talk about the menace is we always have these conversations. And women always have these conversations about having children in their third, late 30s and, and 40s. You know, if you have a baby at or after 35, it's considered a geriatric pregnancy. Like, that sounds crazy. It sounds crazy. I think crazy. of geriatric. I think of old like, balls hanging on the floor. Like, yo, that hurt hair. my heart. <laughs> I was like, oh, what? I'm having a what? <laughs> and, you know, because at 35, that's when your risks go up as far as potential birth defects and um, harm to the mother, et cetera. So it's called a geriatric pregnancy. So I wanted to ask you. you I don't consider myself geriatric, just so you know. I mean, I think, you know, you could take that with great assault. (laughs) I'm Jerry all day. I get out of bed, I'm like, I get in bed, Your middle name is Jerry. (laughs) My middle name is Jerry. (laughs) So I want to ask you, you know, you had Madison, well, not you, but we had Madison at 22. Yeah. We had Peyton. You were forty. No, I was over forty. How old were your journey? I got, I got, I got pregnant at. Did I get pregnant at forty? Maybe I think I got pregnant. So forty-one. Something forty, forty-one. So let, let's talk about the differences. Well, both pregnancies was about the same, right? What do you mean? About pain and difficultness and all that. Both pregnancies. All my, facing. What? But all my all my pregnancies just, are the same. Okay. Yeah. Now, what about? The difference in children as far as Madison being, you know, being a child when you were 22 and Pepe when you were 40. I don't really feel a difference. Really? <clears throat> no, I don't. I, I mean, <clears throat> physically, I still feel like I'm 23. You know, like I don't feel 
Like, I don't feel like those common aches and pains or, you know, anything like that. I don't feel um, tired. I feel exhausted based on what my day consisted of, Mm -hmm. you know, so my day can render me tired at the end of the day. But if I get a normal night's sleep and I have a normal day, you know, I feel fine throughout the day and I feel fine in the evening. We've been tired because we've been overworked mm-hmm. and overwhelmed. But aside from that, no, I feel fine. There's, there's a conversation that, to be had with young mothers and older mothers, right? Mm-hmm. Um, even young parents. <laughs> I feel the difference. Oh, I know you do. When Madison was two years old and there was the ball pit, I'm diving in with her. Mm-hmm. Well, London. Now you're standing on the side throwing the balls at her? No, I'm throwing her in. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm asking one of the other kids to go get her. Uh-huh. That that's how I feel because I don't have the motivation to dive in there anymore. Because now the motivation, I'm, the energy, or the stability. All all of the above. <laughs> all of the above. Because now if I dive in, I know I'm gonna hurt something. Really, you feel that way? Absolutely. Like, like hurt? Like what? They always say once you get older and you fall and you hurt yourself, you don't heal the same. Now you're relating to like the 78 year olds with the hip issues. No, the 40 year olds. That's what I'm hating. The 35 year olds. That's what I'm. Because <laughs> you know I'm, they say that if an elderly person breaks a hip, like their life and health is like all downhill from there. Have you ever heard that? No, but I don't want to be that. Yeah. So so like so, I was reading up on it and I pulled some some actual uh. Info. You did research. I did research well, beforehand. You're actually, not trying to Google it in the moment. I told Mercedes to do it for me. So. All right, that's an improvement. Oh, I so. Back. I was talking and I was saying that if I had a choice, I would absolutely positively want to be a young parent rather than an older parent. I think most people would. No, not necessarily. And that's the, that's the reason. I mean, I a did. lot of people, I don't think that their lives dictate that they can. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't fall in love till later in life. A lot of people haven't hit the, um, the groove when it comes to their career path right. until later in life. So they make a conscious decision. But if they were afforded all those things younger, maybe say in their 20s, then maybe they would have chosen. And also if they had, you know, had the privilege and the blessing of falling in love, meeting the person they want to spend the rest of their life with. But if they had everything laid out for them, I think a lot of people would be um, become young parents if if they could, if they could see the, the thing is, is like, I look at Madison, Madison is 22 and we're able to do things with Madison, right? We're able to, to go to the club, the comedy show, we travel, we can do all these things with Madison. She's a whole adult. Right. Yeah. When Peyton is Madison's age, <coughs> right. I'll be, I'll be like, <laughs> take pictures and send them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to the club with Peyton. Well, we can't. I should, I will not- be. Will be seventy. No. Yes. When Peyton is eighteen. No, I said twenty. When the same age as Madison. That's well, she okay, but I've been going out with Madison that's for 20 a couple years. Of years now. Um, yeah, in twenty years now we'll be in our sixties. High sixties. You can't add. Well, you'll be. I'll be. It. Yeah, we're only a year apart. That's 20, you still can't add twenty years. How old am I? You're at twenty. You don't want me to answer that out loud, no, did you? No. Apparently. <laughs> No, all right. You cut me off right quick. All right, all right. But I'm not. We're not gonna be partying with her. I'm not gonna mm-hmm. be smoking hookah with Peyton. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not gonna be traveling with Peyton. See, with Madison, I have fun and I I really enjoy doing it. Like I enjoy doing things with her because we have similar likes, similar mm-hmm. tastes, similar. Like Madison drives my cars. Like we talk about those type of things. Yeah. With Peyton, I feel like we'll be a lot older and it'd be like, all right. Well, like you said, send me pics. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which would be a, a, a big difference. So now I, I did some some homework. But I mean, hold on. I think that, you know, people in their 60s, I see some six-year-old baddies, you know? Like, there are some six-year-olds that that got it together, that they, look good, that they may not want to go. They're not going to the strip club. They may not want, well, they may not want to go to the club or to the strip club, but they can still physically enjoy times with their kids absolutely you know but i, li- but I mean I, active things like maybe going on vacations and you know just doing typical familial things yeah i get it but there's certain things i'm not going to do so when i did this research it says well when you asked ben's to do this research exactly it says here are the benefits for uh having <laughs> children after 40 they said most women would prefer to have children over 40 because they say that it allows them to establish their career mm-hmm Right. We didn't we didn't have no career back then. We were just I was DJing and we were just figuring it out. 
I mean, it was the beginning of your career. It was. You knew that that's what you wanted to do. Well, correct. That was your path. So correct. you did. Now, they also said that uh, you're financially uh, more comfortable at, at an older age, which is true. Yes. Well. Right. More than likely. Yes. You want to have a child with a partner you met later in life, meaning that, you know, you might not be in a relationship at that early. A lot of people don't have like high school sweethearts and getting married early like we were able to do. Wait, read that again. Uh, want to have a child with a partner you met later in life. Why would you want to have a child with a partner that you met later in life? Because I guess it's... Why, like, is, that, why is that advantageous? Um, maybe because you're with somebody a lot longer. You're more stable. No, you're with them shorter because you, you met them but later you, in life. But you're older, so you're more mature. But that you're trying to make it make sense. No, because it's the next sound one. Like it because it's the next one. Next one it says. No, but let's stay on that one. That one doesn't seem. They like... all go with each other. This is fine that you're more mature <laughs> and ready to handle the responsibility of a child. Studies have mm -hmm. also shown that a child later in life may lower your mental decline, lengthen your life, and lead your child to have better educational results. That's so interesting. The part that says that it may lengthen your life. Mm -hmm. Um, it's so it's it's crazy. Like. That insinuates that happiness mm -hmm. and purpose will physically keep you alive longer. Well, I always say that. I always say I feel like our kids keep me young. They keep me moving. They keep me active. They keep me running around. Uh, not that I so feel the like active I moving and running around are physical components of having a child that you have to do those things with. So physically, yes, okay, you know, cardiovascularly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I think that there's a connection mentally and emotionally. And that's something that's not tangible. It's something you can't um, measure. It's not measurable, you know? So that's just very, you know, that's something that's food for thought, mm -hmm. you know, like purpose. Yeah, absolutely. People that, that feel like they have purpose. Live longer. And that are happier, live longer. There's a place in... The Midwest, I'm not sure what state it is, but there is a state there that has the highest suicide rate mm -hmm. because of the environment. It's gloomy. I believe it, it's not Seattle. and that, Well, that's not the Midwest, but um, it rains a lot. Um, and they say that it's overall, the environment is overall depressing. Mm -hmm. And that's what they um, attach to. The suicide rate. So it just it's just interesting that your emotional well being, based on your purpose, based on your environment, based on your level of happiness, can actually keep you alive. It's not just about you know disease and exercise and mm -hmm. eating well and whatnot. It's your emotions as well. So that that's what made me think, thinking a different way. Right. At first, I was thinking having a child early makes more sense because you're able to grow up with them. But what I do like is I have more patience and more, uh, I would say, father smarts when it comes to these younger kids, right? I agree. Because I know how whatever <laughs> I did affected the older kids. Mm -hmm. um, and I think because of that- You mean uh, the older kids were the guinea pigs? Yeah, yeah so that's you, pretty much so what it was. You, so you figured it out. Yeah, so you figured it out. But not only that, you, we, we've grown, we've matured. We know how to handle situations and yeah. problems. I think sometimes at a younger age, we don't know ourselves, or I don't know myself. But once you start to learn yourself and get in the groove, you realize that you make different, I would say, you make different moves when it comes to your kids. Yeah. And I think that's the, the key of having an older child. Yes. When you're older and having a child. Is that all of them? I yeah, see that's four. all of them. Yeah, that's all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. But let's touch on the negative. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, A, it's, most, it's more likely that you'll have less time on this earth. Mm hmm with that child or those children mm -hmm. and B or two. Did I say one or two? Did I, I say know. A? Well, B, B or two. Mm -hmm. um, Deformities. I was, and I may have, may or not have shared this with you guys on a podcast, but with Peyton, I was a nervous wreck those first 12 weeks because at the 11th or 12th week, you get the results of the test that I took was um, called the panorama. Mm -hmm. And it's a test that tests for um, abnormalities and genetic defects like Down syndrome, spinal bifida, anencephaly, things of that nature. And when you are a geriatric mother, then your, your uh, likelihood of suffering from any of those um, abnormalities or deformities, disabilities, however you call it, mm -hmm. it increases. Um, and, you know, 
there was no reason to, for me to believe that we would be exempt from that. Mm -hmm. So once I gave the blood work, I was just, I mean, hell, even the idea of getting pregnant at that, po at that point made me very, very nervous. I'll take it a step further. We tried to get pregnant for about a year. And my doctor told me, well, there's no reason why you wouldn't get pregnant. Everything is the way that it should be. So if you just keep trying, I'm sure that you'll end up pregnant because our previous five pregnancies were a snap. Yep. It's like, I'm like, oh, I'm ovulating this weekend. We should get pregnant. We would do the thing and be pregnant. Very, very easy with the other ones. But this one gave us some difficulty. So when she said that, I'm like, I don't have time to keep trying because I was probably like 38, 39, I guess. And I'm like, I'm worried that, you know, we may jeopardize the health of the baby. So mm -hmm. I said, let's do in vitro. I just want to get a leg up on this thing. I want to hurry it along. And that's what we did. And if, you, if you're a follower of the podcast, you know the story. We had two failed in vitro attempts. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then, you know, by the second one, you know, we got the negative pregnancy test result. And we said, you know, maybe we're just being greedy. We're just going to have to be happy with five. The next month, I ended up pregnant naturally. Mm -hmm. So it was God's work, you know. Um, I think maybe I feel like God was showing us that it's in his hands. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do all that, you know, human manipulation and da, 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 but ultimately it's up to me. Absolutely. And that's how I took it, you know. Um, but I did that because I was worried about that. And I do know some women that are 40 plus that ended up with... Um, a baby that has challenges, mm -hmm. you know? So that's just something to consider. Um, I wouldn't say that it's likely, but it is possible. So where there are upsides, there are also downsides. Yeah, and we always tell uh, our younger, I would say, friends <clears throat> that are not in a relationship as of yet to make sure you freeze your eggs, right? And Gia tells this to her friends all the time. If you're at the age of 30, freeze them damn eggs. Mercedes, you good? And what we tell everybody all the time, freeze your eggs because <laughs> you want to make sure you have the healthiest eggs as possible. So when you do meet that person and you're ready to have the child, that's not something setting you guys back from having that child. Well, that's what it is, because as you age, your eggs age mm -hmm. because you are born with the total amount of eggs that you are ever going to have. And then every month they diminish. That number goes down. So, you know, at 40 at 42, you may be left with X amount of healthy eggs. So it's something to consider. That's why if you freeze your eggs earlier in life, pre-35 preferably, then your likelihood of having an egg that is compromised is less. That's right. Well, I know we talked about that, but <clears throat> people have been sending us emails like crazy. Mm -hmm. And if you want to send us an email, you can too. It's thecaseycrew at gmail.com. That's T H E E. KCCrew at gmail.com. And don't forget to go to our YouTube page and make sure you subscribe. Tell a friend to subscribe. And tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe, right? Now, this guy didn't want to say his name, <coughs> right? Uh, and this is not it. Where is it? Where I was going to say, it looks like a short email. Okay, here. Yes, it is. It's right here. It's a short email? No, so this is a short uh, question. He says, I don't want to put my name, but I want a divorce from my wife without destroying her feelings. So until I can figure out, or I'll just throw out hints. I need your help desperately. I might be a little coward. Thanks in advance. I feel like I need more from him. Um, I don't think I don't think you need more. I, I feel like I need more from him. No, no. It's, this is this is actually it's very simple. If he wants a divorce from his wife, uh, that means something is going wrong, right? Mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing more. I didn't. I didn't need anything else. <laughs> I swear. Y'all sensing the distrust? I, 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 read, I, I, read, I read what I read. Um, so the reason I'm saying that it, it's you don't need more info for that, obviously something is not working in that relationship and it's not happening. Now, yes, I do feel like you are being a coward because I think you need to tackle what your, your problem is. And I think the problem is something that hopefully can be solved. Maybe you need to have a conversation. And I don't know what it is, but if you're thinking of a divorce. No, 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 no. He didn't say I'm conflicted. He didn't say that he needs more time to figure this out. He said, I want a divorce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but usually people want a divorce because something is not right in their relationship. And a lot of times, <clears throat> a lot of times people are rather run than to fight or to figure out what that problem is in their relationship. 
Like that happens all the time. This is true. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but in the email, he's not asking us about that. Holmes is saying he wants a divorce. But why? So he's a, that's didn't the I say that I need more information? <laughs> you know, but that's why I'm like, if you agreed <clears throat> with me from the beginning, why did you just say that? But I'm saying the problem is he needs to. I feel like I can't help him. All right. OK, well, now this leads me to the next. Well, well hold on. Hold on. I mean, since you already started, let's try. Let's try to give. Let's try to give our best take considering what he has said. He wants a divorce. Mm -hmm. He does not want to destroy her feelings. Until he figures this out, figures, figures it out, he's just throwing out hints. He needs our help. So, what kind of hints? Like, like is he farting in the bed <laughs> while she's... Well, oh, she's laying right there next to him. Well, this is the thing. Is he, is he slightly letting her know that he doesn't care about her? But this is the thing. And this is what I was saying. I think couples now are so quick to run away than to handle their problems, which brings me to the second email. Now, they, they're not the same, but it's very similar. Hold on. Can you send us another email um, in the subject line? Put your name and important so we make sure that we're looking for it and we see it and can you please give us more details i don't like to just like fake help somebody or no, no, fake no. give my advice like well, this connects to this okay i'm just saying I, I i would like some more information though listen to this my husband hey my name is Paige, and my husband has sleep it's his wife no listen oh. it might be, <laughs> it might be. <laughs> my name is Paige. <laughs> my husband has sleep apnea but he refuses to wear his mask his snoring is so bad, it shakes the walls at times. Oh. He is also very sensitive about it and will have an attitude for days if I mention it. Aww. However, I cannot sleep and is wearing me down. I have tried turning on loud fans, the TV, earplugs, and even sleeping at the foot of the bed, but nothing works. If I sleep in another room or wake him up just to get a little break, he gets furious and becomes passive aggressive by slamming doors, wow. turning on the lights once I'm asleep. Just too much to name. Then after a few days, he is all over me and apologizing. <clears throat> it's all becoming too much for me. How do I address this without bringing up divorce? Wow, her I know, sleep is that important. I know it sounds stupid to divorce over <laughs> snoring, but I just wow. don't know how to reach him. <clears throat> I have even recorded him and he was shocked at how bad it is mm -hmm. now. But he just laughed it off and said, I'm being a nag and dramatic. Please give me you guys a point of view because he won't go to counseling. Sincerely, Paige. Counseling. So that's two people that want to divorce, right? Let's so discuss. counseling would address his outrage Correct. at the thought that she's annoyed by the sleep that she's deprived from because he won't have a conversation about it. Correct. Um, yeah, so counseling I do think would be... A good idea. But what is counseling going to do? The um, no, like I said, and that's why I specified the counseling is to is to address the outrage. The it's not even passive aggressiveness. It's the aggression that he's showing her anytime that she tries to breathe a word mm -hmm. about it. Um, and that's the type of thing that you have to talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, like if there's an issue, if there's a problem, we have to be able to sit down like two reasonable adults that love and care about each other. And address each other with respect. Yeah, but and he doesn't have that respect. I know somebody that has sleep apnea mm -hmm. and his wife does sleep in a separate room because it is unbearable. Um, did she mention whether he has the machine or not? Did I miss she that part? No, she said that he has the machine or he, ha he refuses to wear his mask, whatever that means. So maybe it's a mask that connects to the machine. She so means. it could be that he's either being selfish about it or that it's uncomfortable for him. Um, so I can't really speak on that because I don't know why he's not wearing the mask, but the fact that he doesn't is causing her some level of distress. So he should be able to talk about it. I don't really know what talking about it would do unless it's a conversation about whether you feel uncomfortable or not. You have to wear the mask anyway. Mm -hmm. um, one solution would be sleeping in separate rooms. She probably doesn't want a lifetime of sleeping in a separate room than her husband. And he probably doesn't want a lifetime of wearing that damn mask. Yes, but so they, some, have, they have to meet in the middle somewhere. What would the middle be to you? Hmm. You wear you wear the mask on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. No, I, <laughs> like, I mean I'll be honest because I <clears throat> I couldn't imagine sleeping with a mask on connected to a machine. Like it would be difficult because you move, you roll, and that would have to be almost horrible. 
mm-hmm. like to sleep. I probably couldn't sleep. Uh, and the bad thing about people who snore, because I've had I had a snoring problem. I don't know if I still do. Do I still snore crazy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. Um, you snore less crazy than you did before you had the polyps removed, mm-hmm. but you still snore. Yeah, I, I snore. But with you, all I do is nudge you a little bit and then you reset mm-hmm. and then you get right. Mm-hmm. He gets... He gets annoyed if she nudges him. I don't even know. Like when the nerve at. of him. That that I'm sorry. I, I, I was gonna say I don't even know when you do nudge me, but mm-hmm. they have to get to some type of middle ground. And I was saying I understand not wanting to be connected to a machine to go to sleep. Like that has to be uncomfortable. But I mm-hmm. also understand her saying, "Nigga, I can't sleep." She um, probably didn't put it in those terms, but but maybe it gets to the point where they watch TV with each other. Maybe they even do the do with each other. And maybe somebody's going to have to sleep in the other room. That's the only way where they're both going to be able to get to sleep because they're probably tired when they go to work, tired mm-hmm. when they're out and about, but they can't do anything. And if you love him, the sleep apnea shouldn't make you leave. You should just figure out mm-hmm. how to make it work. I would bet everything that she's not considering divorce because he has sleep apnea and she's made to be uncomfortable in her bed. I bet everything that it's because of his reaction to her bringing it up. Yeah, she should have free reign to bring up anything in the marriage that she's uncomfortable about mm-hmm. or that makes her unhappy. And to be met with an attitude when I'm trying to tell you something that's bothering me tells me that you don't care about my feelings. You don't care about what's bothering me. It seems very, very selfish A little bit. on his part. But also he can be embarrassed. Like that could be something that's embarrassing. The I don't. Fact I, that I, I need my a, opinion I need is a, that it. I need a freaking machine to go to sleep, and, and you're telling me, "Hey, babe, use the machine." You non sleepy ass motherfucker. Like that could be a little embarrassing. I don't think so. I don't think having sleep apnea is something to be embarrassed about. I don't think that's something that would bring up insecurity. That would embarrass me a little bit if, if I had to wear a mask. To if go you had to sleep a medical condition, night, yes, that's embarrassing. You would be embarrassed. That would be the same I embarrassment of, not, of my dick not getting hard. You're, that's not true. Yes, it is. No way. These are all ailments that make you feel, in my opinion, less than a man. It doesn't feel good to have Can to you, wear I, a mask. I need a little bit more clarification. Hold on. Having erectile dysfunction is completely different. No, it's not the <laughs> like, same. Like, how do you put those on the same plane? I'm not saying. <laughs> like, I'm not saying they're the same. Like, but it's it. But I'm saying you said both, you'd suffer the same amount of embarrassment. It's both embar- not the same amount, but it's both embarrassing because you feel like you need some outside. Can you rewind that outside. And see source. what it was that he said. Don't really want I kind of feel like no because it's it's some type of embarrassment because you feel like you need some outside source or some outside thing to do something that most people do normally and that breathe. Is, and yes, breathe. A mat like <laughs> it's not like it's a little mass. It's like you. It's like you're an airplane. So now it's you got a mass. It's a big old <clears throat> ugly mass. It is. You ever seen those masks? It's a big ass mask with a tube connected to an oxygen tank, and you can't roll. You gotta sit like this the whole night. I I would be hard pressed to imagine a husband or a wife that would look at their man or wife laying there with sleep apnea, looking at them with a the big old ugly mask, thinking. You unsexy mother trucker. That's how you <laughs> like. I don't I'm think on. So. I'm naked in bed with this big ass mask on my face. That's not sexy. And then in um, the morning, you gotta you gotta smell likely, your own breath. You might have your breath smells in the morning. Going that, now that might be offensive. Like, like no, like that's crazy. More than likely, we've already had sex, and mm-hmm. now you put the mask on, and now you're going to La La Land. I would cuddle you and the cord and the mask and everything. <laughs> like I wouldn't give a damn if you had sleep apnea. Well, that's how you feel. I I, uh, I just. I, I feel differently. A, a like, woman, a woman that had a problem with that, or a man, there would be something really wrong with them. You know, which gives me an, a moment to play devil's advocate. Mm-hmm. Are you addressing the problem delicately and with kid gloves? Yeah, right? maybe, maybe she's like my nigga. Come on, stop it! No, I'm sure. <laughs> my stop my it. nigga, wake up! Like, like maybe she's no, doing no, no. that. I, I doubt it's that, but maybe it's not in a sensitive way so maybe her man is sensitive like it sounds like somebody might be if he had a medical condition and maybe he really needs to be approached in a different way maybe you know you you approach him saying something like i know that this is something that is difficult to talk about it is but instead uh, so, okay, so, okay 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 right, right we got the same idea we got the same idea. okay <sighs> Baby, baby, 
Hmm? Hey, well, first of all, I wouldn't do it while you were sleeping. I'd wait till the morning. All right, so all so right. now you woke up. Uh, oh, no, I don't wear the mask. Hey, babe. <laughs> had a good night's sleep? Your breath stinks anyway. <laughs> <laughs> mask, no mask. <laughs> let, let me catch you some spearmint. Uh, I mean, anyway, let's I mean, put that to the side. I mean, I ate you out last night. That's probably what you're smelling. But what's up? <laughs> you want to play this game? I can play this game too. Come on. <laughs> let's reconvene after I shower. <laughs> Okay, now I'm out the shower. Go ahead. So last night, mm-hmm. um, I had good to sleep last night. Boy, I was knocked out. I'm sure you were. I'm mm-hmm. sure you were. Um, the sleep apnea kicked in, and I wanted to talk about it. Okay. Okay. I want to talk about it. I want to talk about why it's so hard to talk about. Mm-hmm. Not the fact that you don't wear the mask. Not the fact that, you know, you're suffering from something medical. I want to talk about why, as your wife, you mm-hmm. find it so difficult to discuss it with me. I, I don't have a problem discussing it with you. You bit my head off three days ago when I tried to bring it up. I mean, you asked me to wear the mask and I don't feel comfortable wearing a mask. And you say, uh, you know, I snore at night. And, you know, sometimes as couples, we have to get over things. Like, you know, when you use your vibrate, I hear... <clears throat> I don't get upset and say, hey, baby, stop using the vibrator. I know it pleases you, so I'll let you live. Can we stay on task? Of course. Okay. Just bring it back. Mm-hmm. See, it's, it's passive aggression that mm-hmm. I'm talking about right now. Well, what do you mean? Because I'm trying to address a topic, and you have to throw something else in it to offend me. I, I didn't mean to offend you. I so was, that's, that's the definition of passive. About- like, you have a nice, soft tone. But your intention was aggressive. So what's your question? So the question is around the bush. <clears throat> that was last night. <laughs> I'm talking about now. Okay. So you're still trying to distract from the topic. Okay. okay? All right. Why is it so difficult for us to communicate? We can communicate with Because I think that once we're able to communicate, then we'll be able to get past the problem. What's your question? I just asked it. Why can't we communicate? We communicate that's, now. That's what I asked. We're talking. That's communication. Okay. Do, do you know so, the definition of all right. communication? Okay. So since we're in the process of communicating, mm-hmm. tell me why it's been so difficult for you to communicate in the past about what I'm trying to communicate with you now. What are you trying to communicate with me now? I want a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> like at this point, it's <laughs> just incommunicable. <laughs> I mean, you know, can we have a real conversation? Yeah. Okay. Baby. Yeah? I have a problem Mm -hmm. with the fact that it's very difficult for me to sleep alongside you. And because I love you, Mm -hmm. I don't want to be put in a situation where I'm forced to move to another room. So I want to come up with a solution that allows me to sleep comfortably beside you and for you to be able to sleep comfortably and secure at the same time. How do, How do you think that we accomplish this? I don't know, because me putting on that mask makes me feel less of a man. It makes me feel I need like a machine to be alive. And you do. You do. Do you what? Need that machine to be alive. No, I'm, I'm alive now and I don't have the machine. I don't use the machine. You said it makes you feel like you need the machine to be alive. Right, but I don't need a machine. I, I'm alive and I don't use the machine. Yeah, but there... <clears throat> You're talking if about... I understand, if I understand it properly, there can be a situation where you suffocate at night because you think that you can breathe on your own, but you can't. If I stop choking, so, you're there to wake me up. I may not wake up. This is going nowhere. I think that we need to seek help. I think that we need to... <clears throat> maybe again visit a doctor that can express to you the importance of you wearing the mask and i think that we need to seek therapy so that we can have an easier path of communication because it doesn't seem to be working between us right now and i just want to say that i really appreciate although i think that you're being funny and passive aggressive i appreciate the fact that you're not yelling and screaming and what about the headphones aggressive. i bought you i bought you headphones So are we going to seek counseling and see the doctor or not? It's just a yes or a no. So, it's just a yes or a no. So can I return the headphones? 
Okay, so this is going nowhere. <laughs> but I mean, I guess that's how the conversation should go. <clears throat> but I the, understand. The, the point is, no matter how silly, mean, aggressive, or selfish that someone acts, it's always important to maintain a level head. You right. know, silly stuff aside, um, to not let your emotions or your frustration take hold of you when you're in the midst of an argument or the midst of a disagreement, because that's the easiest thing to do. A lot of times when we're having a disagreement, I have to constantly remind myself not to interrupt because that's something that drives him mad. It does. And in my opinion, you know, sometimes when you have a conversation, it really is a back and forth and it's not always a matter of interrupting. Um, it's a matter of conversing. You know, it's a matter of having that conversation, but he likes to have the platform, whether it means that he's going to talk for 10 minutes or not. Um, and I like to kind of just have that, that back and forth. So we have different discussion styles. Where, where we can make it, yeah. Um, so I have to constantly remind myself, like, don't jump in, don't interrupt, mm -hmm. you know, just sit back, relax. And when you're having a disagreement there depending on what your partner's things are, you have to constantly possibly remind yourself not to do those things. Like there are people out there that they love to use curse words. We do not curse at each other when we're having um, a disagreement. That is a hard no. No, we don't curse at each other. No. I curse all the time, though, but just not, not at, each at each other. Correct. No, no, not at each other. He never, like we never address each other with curse words um, because... That's wholly disrespectful. But for some people, that's par for the course. That's right. That's normal, you know? And if that's your argumentative style, then I encourage you to change that because it's nothing but belittling and disrespect. But my point is that for her, you know, I think it's important if he's so overly aggressive, she may have to remind herself to just keep a calm tone regardless because maybe it is coming from a place of insecurity. And there's a term you catch more bees with honey. Than vinegar. That's right. You know, so my best advice would be to use honey and try to disarm him with kindness and come at him with the idea of I'm trying to figure out why it's so hard for us to communicate. I wouldn't come at him trying to address the actual problem because it's like, you know, the horse comes before the cart. You have to address the communication before you're able to address the problem. That's right. Well, thank you. And good luck with your problem. I don't, I don't remember your name. Your name is Paige. Good luck with that, Paige. And if you want to send us an email, you can. It's thecaseycrew at gmail.com. That's T H E E K C crew at gmail.com. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys for joining us. Uh, this is podcast two on our way back. Right. Mm -hmm. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. uh, and we will be seeing you guys each and every week. Um, next week, I want to um, talk about two things. OK. Uh, one, I want to talk about uh, age gaps in relationships. OK. Uh, this conversation was re-sparked a, a couple of weeks ago and people have been talking about it. Uh, this comes from Drea. Drea is uh, pregnant. She's 38 or 39 years old. And the person that she's pregnant from, he plays basketball, he plays for the Houston Rockets. He's 22. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about that. And also, um, if you look up in the, in the industry, just 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 to give you a couple, because it, it's it's really crazy. Um, I had to look up 40 celebrity couples with big age differences. You know who number one is? Who? George Clooney and his wife, 17 <laughs> years apart. That's the biggest? As far as celebrities. Uh, then you have uh, Leonardo, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. He's married? Mm -hmm. 23 years apart. I didn't know that he was married. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce. So then he would be the biggest. Well, I, I, it's just a list, but yeah. Okay. Jay-Z and Beyonce, 12 years apart. Um, Nick Jonas and his wife, 11 years apart. Uh, just to name a few. Ellen DeGeneres and her partner, 15 years apart. Mm -hmm. Adam Levine, 10 years apart. Just to name a few. So I want to discuss that. Because uh, at first I was like, well, if they're legal, they're legal. But then I'm thinking about Well, you're going to talk about it now. Don't talk about it now. We'll, we'll talk about it. We'll love to hear from you. We'll talk about it next next week. And mm -hmm. also, uh, I'm trying to get Rip Michaels on the show. Um, and mm -hmm. we probably will get Rip Michaels. If you haven't heard, Rip Michaels is a comedian. If you follow us, he hosts all our events. Uh, a couple of months ago, he had a heart attack. 
uh, to the point where he was rushed to the hospital. He was in the hospital for months. Uh, he needs a heart transplant right now as we speak. Uh, but his wife left him. Yeah, when he was in the hospital. In the midst. In, in the midst. His wife actually left While him, he was in the hospital. Left, did not come back, said so she couldn't take it. She couldn't handle it mentally. Allegedly. And, and never came back. No, this is what he said. I know, so it's allegedly. Yeah, that, well, that's what he said. So, um, I mean, he talks about it, of how that was probably one of the worst things where, you know, they go to, well, who's your next of kin? Who's here for you? And he said she's in the waiting room and she wasn't there. Um, and I want to talk about that. I mean, because that's crazy. And hopefully we have him here to discuss that. Uh, and if not the next podcast, then possibly the Yeah, we'll week. definitely have, we'll have, we'll have Rip, because I'm going to see Rip tomorrow, but we'll definitely so have So an upcoming there. podcast. So we, when you talk about death do us part, that's death. Like she was like, you about to die. That, she didn't wait for that. Wait. She was like, no, nah, she was like, right, we we out, we getting it now. He made a funny joke about it. He was like, when I was rushed to ICU, she was like, I'll see you later. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. But anyway, I mean, it's it's amazing that he could that he could laugh about that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. but anyway, we'll see you guys next week. We appreciate it. again. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, on Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we appreciate you. We back. All right. Email us at thekccrew at gmail.com. That's T-H-E-E, kccrew at gmail.com. I want to salute to our sponsors, Monster Energy. If you're out, go get yourself a Monster Energy. It gives you just a little, you know, push if you need to get through. And also salute to Lincoln Tech. If you're looking for a trade school for you and your kids, Lincoln Tech is the perfect trade school. Whether you want to learn HVAC, whether you want to learn welding, whether you want to learn about automotive, uh, healthcare. Definitely check out Lincoln Tech. All right. We'll see you guys next week. I'm DJ NV. And I am Gia Casey. And that was another edition of the Casey Crew. Toodles. Toodles.